Hey class, I'm Mr Thornton, and I'm going to help you get that C in your GCSE. This lesson, Inheritance. This topic was suggested by Ashen Page, Zara Malik, and Nathasia Vianca. If there's a topic you'd like me to cover, then just leave a comment below. Before we really start talking about inheritance, we need to talk a little bit about our DNA. Our DNA is arranged into large molecules known as chromosomes. And those chromosomes, if you stretch them out, they're a really, really, really long double helix, that's a double spiral shape of DNA, coiled round and round and round and round. Individual sections of this DNA are known as genes, that is a section which controls one particular characteristic. And different types of genes, for example, the genes which control whether or not you have an earlobe, those are known as alleles. So, for example, one type of allele may cause you to have attached earlobes, and the other type of allele may cause you to have unattached earlobes. These alleles are passed on from your parents via their gametes, that is, their sperm and egg egg cells. And these cells are really unusual. We refer to them as haploid cells because they only have half of the DNA. Remember, HA for haploid, HA for half. When the sperm cell fertilizes the egg cell, then that DNA from each one of them joins together and we get a diploid cell and we refer to that cell as a zygote. So the fertilized egg cell is a zygote, and it's a diploid cell because it's got a complete set of DNA. Now, out of your chromosomes, 23 of them come from your father and 23 of them come from your mother. And so the egg cell carries 23 chromosomes and the sperm cell carries 23 chromosomes and together they join together to give the 46 chromosomes which go to make up the fertilized zygote. At foundation tier, you need to be aware that the gametes, the sperm and egg cells, are produced by meiosis. You don't need to worry about what meiosis is though. Now let's take a look at how a simple bit of information, what sex the baby is, let's see how that is determined by the way chromosomes are passed on. All females have a pair of X chromosomes and males have an X and a Y chromosome. One out of this pair is passed on to each gamete. So a female could pass on one of her X chromosomes or the other X chromosome to an egg cell. And it'll be split roughly 50-50. Half of her egg cells will have one X chromosome and half of her egg cells will have the other X chromosome. A male can pass on either his X chromosome or his Y chromosome to his sperm cells. And again, half of his sperm cells will have an X chromosome and half of his sperm cells will have a Y chromosome. And so we get a combination which looks something like this. These are the four different possible combinations which you can get. You can see that we could have the first X chromosome from the mother and the X chromosome from the father, in which case you get two X chromosomes and you get a girl. Or we could have the second X chromosome from the mother and the X chromosome from the father, in which case it's still two X chromosomes and you get a girl again. Alternatively, we could have the first X chromosome from the mother and the Y chromosome from the father, in which case we get an X and a Y and we get a boy. Or we could have the second X chromosome from the mother and the Y from the father again, in which case, again, we get a boy. So there's a 50-50 chance that we're going to get a boy. And these are all the different possible combinations. For foundation tier, you don't need to be able to draw a diagram like this, but you do need to be able to interpret it, and particularly say what the probability of an outcome is. So we could say it's a 50% outcome, or we could say it's one in two, or we could say it's two quarters that you'd get a boy or that you'd get a girl, but you need to be able to interpret it. You need to be able to say what's going on. We could also use a chart like this one. This is known as a Punnett square, and it's a way of representing the same sort of relationship and showing how that genetic information combines. And we're going to come back to these in a little bit more detail in a second. But you can see that by convention, the genetic information from the father goes horizontally and the genetic information from the mother goes vertically. And so as you go down the columns, you've either got the first X chromosome from the mother in the first column or the second X chromosome from the mother in the second column. And then horizontally, in the first row, you've got the X chromosome from the father. And in the second row, you've got the Y chromosome from the father. 
and you can see all the different possible combinations which you can get there. Now some types of allele, remember an allele is just a form of a gene, so you could get genes for controlling say hair colour or eye colour, an allele is just one form of that type of gene. Some types of alleles are what we call dominant, that means it only needs to be present from one of the parents in order to control the development of that characteristic. So you might only need the gene for, say, brown hair from one parent in order for that offspring, for that child, to have brown hair. Another type of allele is a recessive allele. And in that case, it's got to be present from both parents in order for that particular characteristic to develop. Ginger hair is a good example of this. And think of the Weasleys from Harry Potter. Both the mother and father have got red hair. And so they can only pass on those red hair alleles because they must have both of them themselves. And then that means that all their offspring have red hair as well. Technically, this is a slight oversimplification. Genetics is quite complex and that's not always the guaranteed outcome. But most cases, if you have two parents with red hair, you're likely to have offspring with red hair as well. I hope that video really helps you. If you want to check how well you understood, then try the snap quiz. The link is right here and it'll also be in the description along with all the other links for this video. If you want to check out my other videos, then click right here. If you want to download the free app I've made to help you with your revision, then you can click right here. If you want to subscribe to my channel, then you can click right here. Don't forget to leave likes, and if you go to the comments, you can give me feedback and let me know which topics you'd like me to cover next. Good luck in your GCSEs everyone, and thanks very much for watching.